Bond, Jennifer Bond, and I'm a third grade teacher in Walt Lake, Michigan. And today I'm here to talk about nurturing students' passions. In order to be irreplaceable, one must be different. Coco Chanel, I'm sure each one of you in this room can agree that some of the most successful people you have met have found their way to stand out in this world and be able to find their niche in the market. Yet, does our education system really show that? We are flooded with common core, ACTs, SACs, standardized testing, and we have a one-size-fits-all model. And pretty much, I know I can't really impact the standards that come from policies, but I can impact the student passions. About four years ago, I started doing Innovation Day that kind of stemmed from Pernil Rick and Josh Duffenhorst, a day dedicated to children creating anything they wanted to, from sewing to creations, they were able to be totally creative. It also prompted me to do the Global Cardboard Challenge from Kings Arcade, and I've done it for the last two years, a day dedicated to cardboard creativity. With all of these, I've been very excited to try also passion time, 20% time, genius hour, and in my classroom this year, I've embraced it and we've named it full time. For 45 minutes every Monday, they were able to work on anything they wanted to as long as they had a goal and something to achieve. From creating bracelets, to drawing, to working in Minecraft, or um, just teaming up and creating a play, children use their creativity to do anything they were passionate on, and it's been a wonderful, wonderful journey. This fall, I'm not sure if all of your schools were like this, but the loom craze just took off. And I had rubber band looms all over my classroom. Kids were making bracelets, little animals, pencil grips, and it was just really neat to see them watching YouTube videos and working together to teach. Well, then I also noticed that the rainbow loom hook also looked like a crochet hook. And I used to crochet when I was little and even as an adult, and I thought, I always wanted to teach kids how to crochet. So I opened up and said, if you want to learn how to crochet, go ahead and bring a crochet hook in and yarn. So I sat and taught kids how to crochet. Third graders were not very good at picking this up the first time, but I was a little nervous. I maybe set them up for failure. However, they started having crochet and play dates at home, crocheting with grandparents over Thanksgiving break. And then I expanded it to bring in looms. And I just brought in these crocheting looms, and then kids started making their own looms. And it really just started for like a good month and a half, just morphing into different things. One day, another morph was the gold tank smile. Kids started massaging each other and creating this little massage um, area with rainbow and hand massage bracelets, which was very nice. And um, I thought, oh, well, I could probably maybe get in trouble for kids massaging each other at that. So I said, kids, um, sometimes spas have products they make. And I saw in Shark Tank, there was this um, high school girl that made sugar scrub. So the tea spa started making sugar scrub. And we were able to incorporate it into our economy lessons. And the kids really started marketing, creating posters. When a substitute teacher would be in, they would give them a flyer and ask them to buy their sugar straws. And they had their own Edmodo group where they could promote it. And what happened is I saw other kids kind of focusing on a small group of girls, and other businesses started popping up during goal time. They were having duct tape um, frames, they were doing paracord braces. And even one time I said, what are you going to work on for full time? Kids said, I'm writing a business plan. So they were able to model this real life. However, they also modeled the drama as we had headhunting going on and other companies were starting to pull from other groups. And so what do you do? We merge. So the CJ's paracord and spa the T spa are now known as spa tour, and we will be uh, promoting this at Maker Fair Detroit at the end of July to sell our sugar scrubs and paracord bracelets. Maker Fair um, is waiving the commercial fee because we're donating all of the money to foster care, and the kids said, We want to help foster children, so now all the money we raise will go to Hope's Closet and really impacting the good in society. Now, soft skills were some of the things that came out of this school time. Kids really learned that they can work hard and things are hard. They learned teamwork, they learned how to start a own business, and really enjoyed this time. We have an obligation to shape the future, and that doesn't just mean the kid going to college, you know, taking just
just the normal path in life. We have to nurture those creative people, and whether they're going to be a kid rock or just like me in a classic rock band in a garage, we have the obligation to shape the future. So what are you passionate about? What are your students passionate about? Take the time to nurture their passions and enjoy the journey it takes you out. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I'm excited to share.